I'm speaking with some of the members of the 1961-62 Port Arthur senior hockey team, known by many as the Bearcats, including players Ab Cava, Gino Antoniazzi, and Gino Antoniazzi and their coach Lee Fogelin. This team was selected by the CAHA to represent Canada on a 15-game European tour, going on to win the Hearn Cup, emblematic of European ice hockey supremacy in the International Ice Hockey Federation. I would like to ask each of you to recall the greatest memory you have of that outstanding hockey experience, starting first with Ab. Well, Diane, you know, there's no doubt in my mind the, the highlight of it was the final game, you know, when we, we won the cup, like, uh, it's probably uh, of all my, my, whole, my, all my career in hockey or baseball or whatever I played, that's, that's the highlight for me, like, uh, I don't think you could ever recapture that, you had to, you had to be there to witness, it was, uh, it was really something. What were the crowds like at the game? Well, I think at that particular game there was 21,500, that's if, and it was an outdoor rink, but you couldn't tell that because there were so many people. But I, I think that was that crowd was announced at 21,500 yes. that particular game. But every game we played, you know, they were in the in the teens of thousands. I mean, you know, we, we every game was like almost a sellout. Lee Fogelin, what are your greatest memories of that series? I have to agree with Ab. It was a final game. It was New Year's uh, afternoon, and there were over uh, 20,000 people. As a matter of fact, they were just in the process of putting a roof on this. Joanna's uh, Stadium or whatever, yeah. it's still there. And the people were on the rafters, they were on the pilasters, and, yeah. and it was just fabulous. And uh, our guys played so well, we won that game, I think, 3-2. And uh, that, hey, I've been on the Stanley Cup team, and that's really something. But this does something else. You have to go through it to really realize what it is when you wear a sweater with Canada on it. That is it right there. It's quite an emotional thing. I yes. would gather for all of you. No question. Gino, Antoniazzi, your greatest memories. I'll just reiterate what uh, Ab and uh, Lee said. That was a great proud moment uh, for all of us. An odd experience that uh, stands out in my mind is the first time we played in Prague, Czechoslovakia. People started whistling. If you can appreciate 10,000 people whistling, like I was wondering, what's happening here? Like you know. Remember that, fellas? Yeah. Right. They don't cheer or clap or yell. They whistle. They it's whistle. a high-pitched whistle. Oh, God, and, yeah. Oh, oh. It's ears. common now because, you know, that's 30 years ago, but in them days it was something new. But, you know, Brand we've watched new, so yeah. much international hockey now where, where it happens it. all the time, but it, it, was, it was new to us. Oh, yeah. yes. What, what do you think it was about the Bearcats that made them so successful? Well, as coach, I'd say it was dedication, discipline, and the desire and without those three ingredients let's face it forget it i don't care how much talent you have if you're not in condition if you don't have that desire and willing to sacrifice it's for naught and all these guys were just fabulous it, it, it was a pleasure to coach them well i would like to just add dan and, and and lee's probably too humble to to you know to give himself a pat in the back but you know like doesn't matter what you're doing you have to have something at the top and I think that uh, uh, Lee is coach. Uh, we know how dedicated he was. I mean, that's he, right. That's and believe right. me, I, I can go on and tell stories about about that. And you know, Russ Poole is manager, and we had a good team executive with Dr. Gwazdecki. And so you know, it rubbed off on the players. Sure, we had a good bunch, but we had good leadership uh, with these people too. Gino, same yeah, thing. I'll agree with what Albert said and Lee. And also, uh, as hockey players. Uh, Never saw such a bunch of guys uh, work together so well, like, you know, again, like Albert said, maybe because of our leadership, like Lee and uh, the rest of the boys, like, you know, we got along so well. Everybody helped one another. Interesting. So it was a real team effort. Sure. Oh, no question. All of you gained success, um, and you started all of your hockey careers in Thunder Bay. Lee going on to the National Hockey League, and both of you gentlemen very successful locally and with the Ahern Cup. What do you think it is about players from Thunder Bay? that has had given us such success in hockey? Well, if I can start that, I, I tried to analyze it over the years. I kind of went through this. I was one of the, the first group that left here was um, Gus Bodner, Gay Stewart, and um, Bud Poyle. Bud Poyle. Uh, they became the fourth line with Toronto uh, Maple Leafs. And then from there on, there were six teams uh, there were only, say, 30 defensemen picked, six goaltenders, and still we had at least one player from Thunder Bay, Fort William Port Arthur back in those days, that played on 
everyone the National League. I think we were hungry. I speak for myself. Back in those days, it wasn't that easy to get an education. Uh, so um, we used hockey as a uh, stepping stone to further yourself. And I think it was being hungry, and we realized that if we worked hard and made it, it would give us a good start. Mind you, nothing like today with the wages. But still, it opened many doors, and it would give you a start financially. Gino? Yeah, I have to agree with Lee. Also, uh, in days gone by, we didn't have the distractions that uh, the kids have today. Like, we had to go out and create our own fun and entertainment. And it was down at the corner rink to play hockey through the winter months, and down at the uh, ballpark or uh, the school grounds to play baseball. This is all we did, and we developed real well by ourselves. Pretty good, Ab. Yeah, and I agree. It's, you know, it's a matter of economics, uh, and I don't think, you know, uh, our, our, us three sitting here, for instance, our parents probably couldn't afford more than a hockey stick, and probably they didn't even buy our sticks for us. We bummed them or made them or something, but you know, today, uh, in fairness, and I'm not saying it's not good, you know, there's more for kids to do. Of course, there's skiing, and there's things that parents can afford to do. In those days, uh, uh, our parents were immigrants. They came over, and it was enough for them just to put food on the table. So what we did, we organized our own fun. We'd go to the corner rink and uh, have a game of shinny or stuff. And I think that was good, and I think it uh, uh, helped develop characters. And, uh, in fact, it helped uh, develop skills as well, I think, uh, you know. So I don't think we'll ever get back to that, and maybe it's better that, you know, maybe we're better off today. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, though. Well, yeah, if, if, if I can add to that, too, I feel that they've taken the fun away from the kids. They're putting them under too much pressure. These um, special teams they have, um, it's unfair because the three of us might have played minor hockey as midgets, one gets picked for this, uh, what do they call those teams now? Rep teams. Uh, rep teams. teams. Mm -hmm. What happens, he gets picked, the two of us don't get picked. So we say, hey, we're not good enough to heck with yeah. it. Then they're putting so much pressure that you have to win. And uh, hey, there's enough pressure with school and with what have you that you've got to put the fun back in the game. And some of these coaches, they're dedicated. I, I appreciate that, and I take my hat off to them if I had one. But they get carried away. You know, let the kids have fun. So and they don't, uh, they'll start at seven and eight years old and say, well, he's a little slower and he's a little bigger. We'll put him on the fence. This kid, well, we'll put him in goal. Uh, like we did when we were kids, played shinny on the pond. 15 yeah. guys, 20 guys, six guys. I remember playing with the older ones. You'd be going this way, they'd be coming this way. You wouldn't even touch the puck, but that's where you develop. Chasing them, trying and... Well, you learned to check, because if you couldn't check, you wouldn't get the puck. <laughs> you know, and you learned yeah. to stick handle, you exactly. gave up, you weren't gonna get it exactly. back again. So those type of things, it exactly. develops skills. Now they're getting too technical with these pads and papers and drawings. And <laughs> Hockey's a simple game. Number one, as I said before, conditioning, desire. Uh, you get a system, if you're a left winger, you stay on left wing. You develop a system coming out of your end. You develop a system in the uh, uh, opposition's end. And you work on that. It, it's, it's, very, it's not like football with all the different zigzag plays and what have you. It's a very simple game. Yeah, uh, it is, basically. Yeah. So the future of hockey then, where do you see it going? If, if you were saying that it's getting too technical, do you think there's hope for it improving? Or do they have to take a serious look at well, it? Well, I have to say this, if I may, that uh, the players as individual, they're much better than when we were their age. Mm -hmm. To start with, they're bigger. Uh, I remember I was average, 5'10", 5 5'10 10, 5 10 and a half. There was the odd six-footer. My gosh, when Lee was playing there with Buffalo and Edmonton, I'd walk in and I looked up at everyone. Yeah, it was I'm shocking to me how big. Uh, then uh, they're developing uh, with, uh, uh, for example, even diets, uh, Gino. You know, we ate whatever was on the table. <laughs> I remember one winter, right. the tail end depression was bean soup. You know, yeah. almost seven, no, six days, Sunday was chicken, you know. <laughs> but uh, today they, uh, they have balanced meals. Uh, um, we never went to a doctor unless we were sick. You never went oh, to a dentist right. unless you had a toothache. Today when they're born, they're, they're brought in for checkups. They're, they're given a, um, all different kinds of vitamins. And so individually they are better. 
Uh, if we're talking about pro, I think that they expanded too quickly. I, I'm glad for the players, but uh, the supply is not there for the demand. And I think this is where the problem is. But uh, hockey's here to stay, but a as we look what's going on in Hartford and some of these cities, you know, uh, you can say what you want. It's all right for a sportscaster to say it's not whether you win or lose, but how you play. Mm -hmm. That's baloney. <laughs> you must win. Yeah. And if you win, they'll come and watch you. Lee, you mentioned your son, Lee, of course, Lee Jr., yes. who followed you into the National Hockey League. All of you, your sons, went into hockey. Was this a decision that you made to get them involved, or was it just following in your footsteps? And how did you as parents affect your kids playing? And what are your, your feelings about parents and their involvement with kids in hockey? I think it's great to encourage them. I did. And uh, both my boys played minor league hockey, and, and Robbie advanced to the Thunder Bay Twins at that time. But I'd go out in, uh, on the street with them with a hockey stick and play like you know, or go down to the school rink and skate and play with them. Lee, how did you, did Lee get into the NHL? Uh, as a matter of fact, Lee was not interested in hockey till he was about 10 years old, if you Just remember. Come to our practice. And uh, uh, then at that time I was involved in coaching minor, a little bit of junior and the seniors, and uh, all of a sudden he took an interest. So I says, come on, and he'd come out and skate with the boys for different exercises, and then when there would be scrimmage I'd take him off, of course. But uh, yes, I encouraged him, but he had to make the decision that he wanted to play. I never said, Lee, you've got to. I bought his equipment, and I said, look, if you don't like the game, fine. There's many other things to do, you know? But he took to it, as a matter of fact, playing with uh, Gwazdeki, Dr. Gwazdeki's kids in, right. in their backyard, in the rink. Yeah. And uh, he took a sudden interest, and that was it. And uh, from there, he got some good coaching. He played for Ab, and... Um, but there again, he wanted to become a hockey player. You know, I don't care whether you're a skier or a speed skater or a hockey player. Hey, it's dedication, painful at times, and hours and hours of work. Ab, your son Rory played with the Thunder Bay Twins. Well, in Rory's case, uh, Diane, uh, I always encourage them to, be, uh, to play sports, you know, uh, like baseball in the summer and, and hockey in the winter because that's the way I grew up. And, and I coached him in Little League. He had other coaches too, but I, you know, I always made a point of going. I tried not to interfere too much, and that's tough sometimes. But uh, well, once he got on, uh, and I, you know, it wasn't at that point. It wasn't because I wanted him to become a professional. It was just that I, th you know, I think when you know, if, as long as they're doing something, if it's not hockey or if it's not baseball, and maybe it's something else, you know, swimming or whatever. But I think that kids should be encouraged to do something for, with their idle time, and we encouraged them there. But then, to tell you the truth, when he got to that point where he was going away, uh, he was invited to go play for the Ottawa 67th. I had second thoughts, in fact, I tried to talk him out of it. If you want to know the truth, uh, uh, you know, I would have rather seen him, to tell you the truth, go on to college, and I know he could have done that, but he didn't. You know, he elected to do that, and, uh, and that's fine, but if, if I had my druthers, I, and if I could, you know, give a, a boy some advice today, I would say uh, try to combine the both, if, you know, if you can, get your education and then, uh, you know, if the pros, why well, they'll still be there and the pros can have you after it's done, but sometimes it's pretty tough when you're 16 and 17 years old, you know, and you see the bright lights and you say, well, I have an opportunity, like, what do you do? But, uh, so, to answer your question, Diane, I encouraged them to, you know, to be in sports, but uh, it didn't exactly go the way that I wanted it to go, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Do you think that the talent is, is God-given or that it, it's in every young boy out there on the ponds and that it, with good coaching and good dedication, Lee, you've mentioned the word dedication, you can become the Eric Lindros of the 90s? Um, there are some. I think it's in the genes like a Gwazdeki, a Gordie Howe, a Mickey Mantle, a Joe Lewis. Uh, out of every 100,000 uh, boys, there's one that's just put together a little different. And... Uh, uh, these are the natural, the superstars. But uh, talking about the average, if they make up their mind and uh, they get out and work and they listen and they sacrifice, and that's the thing. You can't be one of the boys and just have fun. You've got to sacrifice if you want to be a um, uh, super skier, a uh, hockey player, whatever it is. Yeah, you only get out of something, Dan, what you put into it. I learned that when I was a little guy, Jack Adams. 
You get out of something what you put in it, whether it's your business, exactly. schooling, your particular job. That's well, it. I think a good example of that uh, Lee, and he's a superstar, probably the greatest hockey player that I ever lived. Wayne Gretzky. If you know, if if you if you read uh, his autobiography, like yes. you know, his he had a rink in his backyard, and he'd be out there till two, three o'clock in the morning, exactly. and, you know, and say what you want. He was dedicated, and he, you know, although he was blessed with a lot of talent, he still worked hard Ooh, to get where sure. he is. So, well, but also what we talked about so earlier, his parents were behind him. At least well, they his were. Dad. Yes, they were. Of course, yeah. giving yeah. a little shove all the time. Yes, of course. Yeah. I would like to get from each of you your memory of hockey in Thunder Bay. Growing up, what are your greatest memories of hockey? Well, seeing I'm the youngest of this group, maybe I'll start then. <laughs> but I can remember uh, as a kid, like, you know, probably uh, the 48 Bruins when they won the Memorial Cup. I, used, I was a regular. I used to go to all those games, you know, with my brother. And sometimes we'd have to wait till the first period was over and get a pass out to go in. And that's when they played on the uh, Perth Arena on, on Court Street. So that, I, I remember that distinctly. I don't remember Lee when he played. I think he was a couple of years before that. And, and Lee, you went away when you were probably 15 or 16. So I don't remember Lee playing junior. Then after that, I actually remember Gino playing for the Forium Canadians. I used to go there and boo him because I was from Port <laughs> Arthur. And uh, he was, you know, the opposition. But um, like that was a thing to do. As a kid, I, you know, we just lived for to go to the junior hockey game or the seniors. And then also the Bearcats were around then. And I had uh, the late Lou, uh, Lou Nistigo. I had the pleasure of living next door to him. So I used to go to games with Louie. When he played, I was like, so he'd take me out of the games. And um, I still talk about those things. I remember them distinctly. And, and I don't know whether it's just because you're young and you look up to these people, but it seemed to me like there was, you know, the hockey was so good and there was such a rivalry. And, you know, it was. Uh, you mentioned you know, the rivalry. Yeah, that's come out in a lot of the people we've talked with. Do you think maybe that had an influence on the success of hockey? Port Arthur versus Fort, versus Fort William, and who was better? Well, absolutely. There was no question there was a...